Welcome back everyone. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a realistic input field animation in Adobe XD. So this might sound simple to you, but I was going through my LinkedIn feed and I saw this Adobe XD video, which had this input field animation. And I saw a lot of people commenting how to create this. So I thought, why not I just make a video on this for this week here. So this is what we're going to create today. And the thing to notice here is you basically can't enter in any value you want because then you'll have to create a lot of screens and a lot of uh, prototyping linking. But here we're going to see how to create it on Adobe XD with a predefined find value here. So here I have my base screen which basically has just an image and then this body content and I have an amount group here which basically has this input indicator which is currently at 0% opacity. If I increase it this is what is going to happen uh, on the further part of the tutorial and then I have this amount field which is a placeholder which will later turn into an actual uh, value and then I have this uh, button which is at 75% opacity just to show that it's disabled and then what we have is this keyboard which I have basically taken it from the iOS uh, design system. So let's quickly get started. I'll just duplicate this artboard here. In this state, I just basically want the keypad to come up. So what I'll do is I'll just move this to the top here, uh, maybe like 24, yeah. And then also bring in the keypad, exactly touching the bottom here. So this is fine. And this is gonna be the first state that we enter as soon as you click on this input field. And then you want this indicator to show up. So I'll make the opacity of this as 100. And you don't want any placeholder there. So I'll just make this as a space. So I just removed that. And I'll just duplicate this once again. And in this state, I basically want the text indicator to fade away. So I'll make the opacity as zero here. So these are the two states that we're gonna keep looping until the user enters a particular value here. So that is the trick behind this. So let's quickly go to the prototype mode and I'll show you what I meant to say. Once I click on this, uh, on this input field, here, I'll just navigate to this one. So that is on tap and I want auto animate. We'll keep this at 0.8 seconds. That should be good. And these two are going to keep looping infinitely. So that is why I'll click on the artboard. I'll link it to the next one and give the trigger as time. Zero seconds delay and maybe like 0.4 seconds of animation here, auto animate. And this one with the same thing back to this one, which is time, zero seconds delay, auto animate and 0.4 seconds. So let's uh, run this and see how it behaves. So I I click on prototype button here. I click on this and there you go. You can see the, how it's blinking here and it's waiting for the user's input. So far, it's pretty cool. So let's just continue this one. So in the first state, I just want to enter a value here. So I'll just duplicate this one here and I'll give in the value as one and make sure that you increase the opacity of this one so that it looks like a normal value. Previously, it was a placeholder. So that is done. And then as I showed you here, we need two states for each number so that we can have this blinking effect. So first thing, I'll just move this towards the right here. So I'll just give it like two pixels here. And there we go, we have the first state. I'll just duplicate this in this state. As I told you, this has to be 0% opacity. And here the thing will keep looping. And one more thing, we'll just bring in the button to 100% opacity to show that it's clickable because the user has already entered the value and it's no more empty. So I'll just duplicate this one. First, we'll just duplicate all the screens and create all the states. So in this state, I'll maybe enter 120 and we'll move the indicator two pixels from here. And as I told you, we need a duplicate state for this where this one is gonna be at 0% opacity. And finally, the third digit. So I'll duplicate this screen here and I'll give this as 0, 120. And we'll do the same thing, move the indicator from here to two pixels. And you also might wanna increase this line here because uh, the user is continuing to input value and recenter the whole thing here. And we need the second state for this to show that the input text indicator is fading away. And that's pretty much it. And I just want to enter into the success screen here. So yeah, we are pretty much done here. And I'll just quickly jump onto prototype mode here and we'll start linking the screens. So far, we have just created this blinking indicator and now I want to enter in the value one. So this one, I'll just assign it to this part here and that's gonna be tap and I'll make this as 0.2 seconds auto animate. So this is gonna have the same thing. So just link it to this one. The next thing we're gonna do is the number two here, link it to this one. Same thing with this screen also, link it to two. And from this screen here, the number is going to be zero. So I click on zero, link it to this one. Same thing with this. Both these send screens, we are going to link it to the success screen here. And we'll increase the animation duration to maybe 0.8 seconds. So that part is done, but we still have to create the blinking indicator. So for that, we need to loop these two screens like we did for these two. So these two will be looped, these two will be looped, and these two will be looped. 
So how we're gonna do that, just click on the artboard here, link it to the next one and give the trigger as time and make this as 0.4 seconds and this one back to the screen with the same settings here. So we'll just use the same settings for these two here, time trigger, 0.4 seconds, same thing back to this and the same thing back again for this one. So link it to this one and this one back to this one. That's it, we are pretty much done. So let's hope everything goes well. I click on the base screen here, I run this as a prototype. I click on the input field, so far so good. We have to enter the value which is 120. One is entered, two is entered. I click on zero and that's it. Uh, I click on the send button and there we go. So that is how we can simply create a input field animation on Adobe XD. But uh, this is just to create a predefined value. But if you wanna create something more dynamic, I would suggest you to go for other uh, prototyping tools like uh, Protopy and UXPin. That's it for this video guys. If you like this video, I'm sure you'll uh, love the other Adobe XD and Figma tutorials that I've created. So make sure that you check those also. Thanks for watching.